Welcome to this environmental management video. The purpose of this video is to show you the challenges that we face in the cleanup efforts of Site 25 here on Edwards Air Force Base. But first, let's take a look back at the history of the area so we can get a better idea of what we're really dealing with. Early in the 1950s here at Edwards, in an effort to better handle the storage and transport of the dangerous and exotic fuels that were being used at the time, the Air Force decided to build the main base unconventional fuel storage area. This storage area was built on a hillside located above the NASA Dryden complex. Some of the exotic fuels stored here in bulk were chemicals like hydrazine and hydrous ammonia, aniline, perfural alcohol, ethyl and isopropyl alcohols, and nitric acid. When the XB-70 supersonic bomber test program was in full swing, the storage area began storing a degreasing solvent called trichloroethylene, or TCE, and later held nitrous oxide for the Airborne Laser Laboratory and hydrogen peroxide for the Air Force Research Laboratory. The purpose for the location of this storage area was to keep these hazardous materials far away from the more densely populated areas of the base. In those times, the environmental hazards of these compounds were not fully understood and handling procedures were not yet fully developed nor implemented. As a result, many employees accidentally and even intentionally dumped excess chemicals, including TCE, right onto the ground. Site 25, uh, the source of the contamination came from an area uh, known as the Exotic Fuels Storage Area and it's been operating since about 1950 and uh, consequently way back from the 50s, 60s and 70s uh, environmental regulations were not in place. Normal practice at the time did not concern leaks or even overt contamination. That's how we have the contamination today. At the end of the XB-70 program, it is believed that one particular storage tank was drained out onto the ground and may have contained over a thousand gallons of TCE. Site 25 has a mile-long groundwater contamination plume that stretches all the way to the NASA Dryden complex. The unconventional fuel storage area is the primary source of the contamination in this plume. The weather and geology of Edwards has prevented the rapid spread of this contamination. The average annual rainfall is five inches a year, and the soil is composed of silty sand of depths ranging from a few inches to around seven feet that sits on top of fractured and weathered bedrock. This hard, dense bedrock can be seen in a few outcroppings in the area. Once the contaminated groundwater seeps into the cracks of this bedrock, it becomes extremely difficult to remediate. It can be very difficult to re for extraction technologies. It's difficult to pull uh, the liquids out of that media. And for injection technologies, it's very difficult to inject them and get them to spread out evenly in the various directions to effectively treat the, uh, the chemicals in the ground. Standard cleanup actions that would normally require either an injection of an oxidant to destroy the contaminant or pumping out the contaminant to treat it are expensive and would be ineffective in the deep, fractured bedrock. Unless you can reach the contaminant with oxidant to destroy it or drill a well and draw it out for treatment, you cannot effectively clean up the area. Essentially, it would require unreasonable amounts of money to locate and treat every contaminated crack in the bedrock. Since the cracks are not interconnected, the oxidant will not seep through and treat large areas as it would in sand or soil. The upper edge of this plume is at an elevation 100 feet above the lower end, causing it to slowly flow over several decades toward the lake bed. The depth to the groundwater averages from 23 feet to 118 feet below the surface. Through various sample wells, contamination has been detected at levels of 250 feet down to 600 feet. The deeper bedrock has much smaller fractures, thereby significantly reducing groundwater flow. Of the various contaminants, the chemical of most concern at Site 25 is TCE. 
By its nature, TCE is heavier than water and therefore sinks into the bedrock fissures more easily than other compounds, rendering it exponentially more difficult to reach and remove. However, currently several different methods are being tested to remove some of the TCE contamination. But we're basically doing this study in order to evaluate the costs of doing treatment up near the source area to better refine the, the large cleanup costs for this gigantic plume that we're dealing with, uh, primarily TCE plume here. In 2000, several extraction wells connected to a granular activated carbon treatment system were installed just up the hill from the NASA Dryden complex. This system works in a fashion similar to the carbon filtration filters used in many homes to remove contaminants from tap water. Over the last 10 years, it has removed more than 190 pounds of TCE from the ground, but is drawing only mildly contaminated water at a very slow rate. It is the slow rate of groundwater flow that prevents this cleanup method from being cost effective. Another method currently being tested is a process called in situ chemical oxidation, or ISCO for short. How it works is either a trench is dug or a shallow well is drilled into the contaminated area and then the subsurface material is injected with the solution of potassium permanganate. The potassium permanganate will slowly infiltrate the groundwater. The theory is that the potassium permanganate will act as an oxidizer to the TCE in the groundwater rendering it harmless. Located adjacent to the trenches are monitoring wells that pick up the excess solution as it seeps through the bedrock. Two months into the test, permanganate was detected in the closest monitoring well and a week later showed up in the next closest well. However, after five months, no other wells have detected any permanganate, even as close as 15 feet away, indicating that lateral dispersion from the trench is limited. Site 25 has been the subject of numerous studies and reports. Many models have been produced to help predict the spread of the plume. Based on these models that have taken into account many of the variables, such as rainfall, soil density and composition, ground slope and viscosity of the contaminants, the models have predicted that the plume will reach the sub-basin boundary edge of the lake bed and begin to seep into the Antelope Valley Aquifer in approximately 500 years. It is widely believed that when this occurs, enough time will have passed that the contaminants will have naturally broken down enough to no longer pose a hazard. Currently, the Edwards team is preparing a feasibility study to persuade the EPA, the Regional Water Quality Control Board, and the California Department of Toxic Substance Control to grant a technical impracticability waiver. This waiver would limit the required actions to containment only, as the otherwise mandatory cleanup could take as long as 500 years and would be extremely expensive. Some estimates are as high as $250 million. This waiver would not mean we can abandon our responsibility, but instead would shift the focus of our financial resources from removal to containment. Efforts would be targeted toward preventing the spread of the plume, and samples would be taken regularly to monitor this. And if in the future, newer and more cost-effective methods of cleanup became available, then the waiver would be re-evaluated. Subsequently, we are going to have a project that's going to be in place very shortly to drill 40 additional wells and conduct some geophysical survey, which is going to give us a much more detailed understanding of what the contamination is, where it is, and uh, we'll be able to answer a lot of questions that the regulators are asking right now. The environmental team here at Edwards Air Force Base has thoroughly investigated and analyzed the groundwater contamination at Site 25. Producing overwhelming evidence to justify a technical impracticability waiver to exempt this site from standard cleanup procedures. Recent USGS geological analysis data has shown that even if the groundwater were left untreated for years, it would still not impact the groundwater supplying the off-base residents and therefore does not pose a risk to those populations.